Hello there, I'm Eric, and this is a video for Photo Focus. And in this video, we're going to take a look at something that was added to Photoshop 2021 called Sky Replace. And, and I don't want to get too technical here. What it does is it replaces the sky. All right, let's jump in and see what's what. So here I am in Bridge. If you've not tried it, you really should. I love Bridge and it's also been updated for 2021 as well. All right, I've got one image waiting to go. It's called Wimpole House. If I double click it, because it's a raw file, it's going to open up in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, if you've used Lightroom, a lot of this is going to seem very familiar to you. But uh, what we're going to do here is go into the geometry because it seems like I do have one leg shorter than the other. Now, while I do this, I'm just going to make this horizontal and vertical. I can tell you that if you are outside the UK, then obviously you will know that uh, these are the kind of houses that we all live in. Um, if you are inside the UK, then please pop along to Wimpole House. It is worth the visit. All right, there we go. I've straightened all that up. I'm going to open this in Photoshop. So finally, here we are. We're now in Photoshop. And what I want to do is I want to replace the sky. And there is several ways to do this and several ways to select the sky in the first place. The way that I'm going to do it is, well, I'm going to use the sky replacement. But before we do that, let's have a look at something else new. If I go to select, I can then come down to select sky. And this does a pretty good job. Give it a second or two. And it's going to bring up the marching ants around the sky. Now I'm going to use Quick Mask here uh, by pressing Q. Don't worry if you're not familiar with Quick Mask, just let you know that it shows you very easily what is masked. And we can see if we zoom in, it's done okay, but there's a lot of bleeding into the roof here. And if I go over to the right, you can see that the tower is also being bled into by the selection and that's okay because that's not the way we're going to use it but i'm pressing q again to get out of quick mask and then control or command d to deselect so let's go find that new setting edit and sky replacement there we go now you can see here that we have a dialog box and we have the spinning wheel there while it thinks about it and it's going to mask in the new sky, which is quite extraordinary. Now, there are different skies to choose from. So I can click on here and you can see that we've got blue skies, spectacular and sunsets. Now, these all come with Photoshop 2021. Let's open sunsets here and we can see that we can very quickly just tap on one and it adds it in. Now, rather helpfully, the last four are up on the top here. So that was the one we opened with um, and then we came in with this one and uh, so on and so forth. OK, those are the sun sets. Here's a spectacular and we can pop that in. Now here I've got a portrait orientated sky, but this is, of course, a landscape image, so it looks a bit wonky. But, uh, you know, you can do all kinds of things. Let's have a look at the rainbow. There we are. Now, if the rainbow isn't quite in the right place, you'll notice it hasn't got the sea in it, even though the original photograph has got the sea. It's not taking the sea. I can get the move tool here and I can move that around um, to my heart's content if it isn't quite right. Um, yeah, OK. Um, obviously, don't want to go off the edge of the screen, but more of that in just a minute. OK. Good. Um, I'm going to go up now to blue skies um, and let's choose one of these blue skies. Let's try this one. OK, that's all right. Um, this one, nice fluffy clouds. Oh, did I not click on it? There we go. Nice fluffy clouds. I kind of like these fluffy clouds because it makes it look more like a, uh, a, a postcardy type image. OK. Now let's go and look at some of the other settings. I've got my sky. 
Now I'm going to just go over shift edge and fade edge just for a second and go into sky adjustments because here we've got a brightness slider and as you might expect we can make the sky darker and we can make it much lighter. Now bringing this down to its darkest we can see what shift edge and fade are actually doing. So here if I click on shift edge and I bring it down again to the extremes you can see now that I'm going to bring the fade edge we now have this banding that goes around a bit uh, HDR-ish if you remember those days um, and I can shift the edge back out as well so we can see what it's doing. Now the fade edge will as the name suggests fade it out so it'll give it a bit of a feather so although we've still got that banding it is feathering it quite nicely. It looks like it's got a bit of a halo so I'm going to feather that I'm going to shift the edge back down a little bit okay somewhere around there but of course I've got to bring the brightness back up again as well to make this look nice okay then we have a temperature so I can change this to more blue or more orangey yellow uh, depending on the image it's going to take uh, or depending on the sky I should say Will have a differing effect. I'm going to pop that into zero. Okay and then we have the scale. So remember earlier on when I moved the rainbow, so let's do that again, um, I can then scale this up should I need to um, just to make it fit a bit better. I can also flip it and uh, that's a horizontal flip backwards and forwards. So that's coming on quite nicely. Now, just for the next bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get one with a bit more extreme colours. So spectacular. Let's choose this one here. So we've got these spectacular colours. I might even choose this one. A bit better. No, we'll go with these ones. Uh, so we've got these spectacular colours. And what I'm going to do is open the foreground adjustments and you can see here that we have a lighting mode and you'll recognize multiply or screen from the layer blending modes um, and screen is more for light and multiply for dark. So depending on how you want it to react with the foreground, actually, I don't like the screen. I'm going to stick with multiply. Now the lighting adjustment, if I bring these to the extreme, you can see how it's adjusting what is in the foreground in a nice gradient there. Um, so that's kind of nice. We'll see that even more when I bring up the colour adjustment. So now it's affecting the rest of the image. It's taking the colour from the sky and adding it to the rest of the image just to make it blend in a little more. And actually, I'm quite happy with that. What I might do with this one though is I might uh, make it a little bit bigger so I might scale this up because that shape kind of matches the the house so it looks a bit awkward I might scale that oh scale that up bring it down a bit um, and then look at the foreground adjustments again uh, not so much color so we've got infinite amount of ways that we can use this I am going to go back to my blue fluffy clouds by the way though um, because it works best with this image I think and uh, let's have a look at the foreground colors I think they're about right as they are so we don't want the too much color adjustment but uh, a little bit of coolness might help anyway I'm waffling down here the very last thing well, not quite the last thing uh, down here is the output whether it's to new layers or to a duplicate layers and I explain those in just a second Let's go up to these bits I've missed. The hand tool, well, you can move the hand, uh, you can move your image rather around the uh, work area if you are zoomed in, which you can do, of course, with the zoom tool. So that works as per normal. Now, here we've got a brush. So let's zoom in. There we go. Now, what I can do here is I can brush in or out the sky. So at the moment, it says plus. So I will be plussing in the sky. And when I say plus, I'm looking at the middle of the cursor there. Does that zoom in on the cursor? Not really. Um, so I'm looking at the middle of the cursor. If I want to take it out, then just like everything else in Adobe, I press the Alt key. And then I can go along here with the minus. There we go. Minus. Take it out. 
easy peasy. I'm going to double click on the zoom tool there just to bring it out to 100% and I can also double click on the hand to make it fit to screen. All right, good. Okay, back to this output. New layers or duplicate layer. I can't imagine a time that I'm going to go on to duplicate layer, if I'm honest. I think I'm always going to go for new layers. And here's the reason why. I'm going to click OK. And straight away, we get this new group. Now, if I used the duplicate layer, it would just duplicate the layer, as the name suggests, and pile all these on it as just the single layer. Then it becomes destructive rather than non-destructive. This workflow is non-destructive because now we can go in and we can do whatever we like. Still not happy with where that uh, sky is? Not a problem. We can move that around. Uh, we can adjust the uh, mask there and we can adjust the mask on the foreground lighting. So you can see we've got foreground lighting, we've got the sky and we've got the sky brightness and the foreground color which uh, is very, very subtle. I don't, wouldn't expect you to be able to see that one, to be honest with you. I'm struggling here. Okay, so you notice that we've got it all together, and that is beautiful. So I can come in there and change anything I like. Now, what I'm going to do next is I want to go back into Adobe Camera Raw because uh, there's some tweaks I want to do. So to do that, I'm going to make these two layers, or the group and the layer, into a smart object. To do that, all I've got to do is click on one, shift click or control click on the other, right click and convert to a smart object. Now everything goes into one layer. It's non-destructive though, because at any time I can double click on that and it will open in another image and uh, I can make adjustments and that will then be reflected in the original. So if I maybe move this again, um, so I'm going to bring the clouds right down. So we've got a cloud going over the top of the house. Control to Command S will save it as a smart object. And then I close that down and you can see that that's been reflected in the one layer that we had before. I'm going to go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter and make some adjustments. So here I can I can go into Color Mixer, which is always my favorite, into the hue and get the little tool there click and drag to the right. Now I'm looking at it on another monitor and it looks very, very green. Um, so I don't want to go too far, but we can also bring up the blues here. Oh, uh, I'll tell you what, let's take that down and change the saturation to the blues, put more blues in there, do whatever we want. And of course I can also do my sharpening here as well. A little bit of noise reduction. There we go. All right, let's do a little bit of basic, uh, bring the exposure up and the highlights down a little bit. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, clarity and texture. Want a bit of texture in there, don't we? Look at that. Beautiful. Um, Dehaze. Could I add a bit, give it a bit of a feel, but let's take it down a little bit. Nice. Um, and I think it's oversaturated now, so I'm going to bring that down. There we go. Spent many years taking out uh, vignettes from different images. Uh, so about time we start putting them back in again, really, isn't it? So there we go. That's fashion for you. All right. And we click OK. And there we are. So we have very quickly and very easily replaced the sky, but also taken that as a job lot, put it into a smart object and then been able to work on that smart object with other tools as well. Now, on Photo Focus, you may have noticed that there was an article about Luminar 4. And in Luminar, there is a sky replacement too. Now, I've used both, and I quite like both. If I'm just working in Photoshop, I think this is going to help me out no end. There are lots of other effects in Luminar that I use from time to time. So perhaps if I'm going over there anyway, I would do that. It doesn't give you the same amount of non-destructive control with the masks and things like that, though. So it's worth bearing in mind. OK, so there we go. We've done our image. We're all happy. We can export that out. That is Sky Replacement. If you have enjoyed this video, I know that YouTubers say it all the time. Sorry, it's becoming a bit of a cliche, I think, isn't it? But please like and subscribe. Definitely like it if you have enjoyed it, because and I'll do more of them, of course. All right, that's me done. My name is Eric Renault, and I will see you again another time. Bye-bye for now.